Greetings, folks. I'm here with Steve Goodset, Corporate Product Manager for Pioneer Metal Finishing. And we're going to be discussing a topic that's been a challenge for the anodized industry, and that's color control and color consistency. Now, Steve, there's a number of factors that lead to a consistent color in anodized product. Um, we'll get to that. Um, one of the major issues we face as anodizers is oftentimes folks will see a color that exists in whether it's a paint or a fabric um, and really point out that color and say, I want that for my anodized product and I want it each and every time. As you mentioned, Dave, uh, it is a challenge to uh, control the color of anodizing the same as the paint industry does. And many products out there are painted. Um, the, the issue is, is that paint is a soft coating, anodizing is a hard coating. Our customers are looking for that resiliency that you get from anodizing and many times want the same control that you get with paint. Unfortunately for us, we don't just apply a single top coat to get the color in anodizing. Anodizing is taking aluminum and converting the surface to aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide is a porous coating. And what we're doing when we color the anodizing is taking different types of pigments and having those colorants absorb into the pores. That's where we get the color from. Another major area that causes a difference in the control in the consistency is how thick those pores are, how dense the pores are, and even the surface finish of the, of the anodizing, which goes back to the base metal surface finish. When we have a dull part, we're gonna get a dull finish. It will have an impact on how the coating looks. When we want to put more coating on a part, we have more pores, we have a thicker coating. Now it's gonna give a deeper color to the dye as we put the pigment into the coating. Here's just some examples of how the uh, surface finish can have a huge impact on the color. As you can see, Dave, I've got two blue swatches here. The one on the top is a dull finish base metal and I get a certain color blue. The one on the bottom has a shiny finish. And even though I've got the same amount of anodizing, same amount of uh, dye time, I'm getting a different look. And also the thickness of the anodizing has a big impact. Same thing again here, same blue dye. The, the swatch on the top is a thinner coating of anodizing. The one on the bottom is a thicker coating. So right off the bat, we have a challenge that you don't see with painting. So Steve, in addition to the dye uh, acceptance into the base coating, Talk to us a little bit more about how light impacts uh, color consistency and overall UV shift of color over time, durability of the, yep. of the dyed coating. So um, a couple of really important factors when doing anodizing as far as the durability and the light fastness of the dye is how thick the coating is. A thinner anodized coating cannot hold as much of the dye material and it will not hold up as much to the, the light and, and uh, without fading and discoloring. And then also the way you seal the pores up. A standard part of anodizing is after doing, making the, the porous aluminum oxide structure and putting the dye material, the colorant into the pores, then we seal those pores off. There's different sealing methods to uh, do the sealing of the anodizing. Some of the processes are as good as other processes. Our experience is that a nickel fluoride seal will do a much better job of holding the dye color. We got an example here, Dave, of some uh, red anodized panels. The panel that has the solid colorant on it was done with nickel fluoride. This panel here was done with another standard anodizing seal called nickel acetate. What we did in this case is we taped off the bottom of these panels and exposed the top half to the sunlight and as you can see, in three months, in the blaring Wisconsin sun, we saw much less protection of the dye with the nickel acetate than with the nickel fluoride. So that's a really important factor is not only how thick the coating is, but what type of seal you're using. Now, overall, most of our customers are picking this color anodizing over paint because anodizing is very hard. It's a dye.
So Steve, I heard you summarize a number of major factors that would drive color with anodized product, um, whether it be dye, thick, uh, dye exposure time, coating thickness, um, or the base substrate and the alloy specifically. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of other factors. We won't get to them all today, yeah. but talk to us a little bit more about each of those major factors. Again, sure. thickness, sure. dye exposure, alloy sure so um, our customers are going to be picking the type of aluminum for the purpose of making the part they might be using a casting because uh, it, they're able to save money by machining a casting they might be using an alloy that has a lot of strength all these different aluminums will anodize differently they'll anodize at different thicknesses and different densities of the coating so the porosity is moving around and then even the anodizing itself, you can see here on this example, different alloys of anodizing, standard anodizing will have various background hues because of the other metals that are in the aluminum. As we go thicker and denser with the anodizing, it discolors more so. When we go to impregnate this coating with the dyes, this background color can have a dramatic impact. <laughs> So Steve, you've talked to us a bit about the sealing of the anodize having a major impact on color consistency over time. We've touched on alloy selection, we've touched on thickness, and a bit on the sealing aspect of color control. Um, dye exposure has a bit to play in this equation as well. Talk to us a little bit more about that and how we'd control both dye time as well as the dye chemistry itself. Yeah, and, and when we talk about dye exposure, it's a combination of the activity of the dye and also being able to control the uh, slight shifts that can happen in the hue of the dye. What we do at Pioneer is we have very defined thickness ranges for the coating mm -hmm. to ensure that we control the range of color as tight as possible. We're also looking at making sure that we have the right porosity level, and that's going to be dependent on the alloy of the aluminum and uh, how much energy we get the part during the anodizing process. And then our teams are very conscious of checking the color consistency in the actual dye chemical. Uh, what we do is we measure the color of that bath on a daily basis. And then we've also have equipment. Uh, this is a spectrophotometer, Dave where we can measure this color with a number. It will give us an actual value. When you look at this blue swatch, you see something. When I look at it, I might see blue to me, but it doesn't necessarily give us a value that we can measure. This type of equipment takes all of the guessing out of that game. So when we look at making sure that the anodized porosity and thickness is controlled and that the dye baths are under tight control and then also use the proper equipment for measuring the color, we have the confidence that we're going to be able to hold this color range as tight as possible at the highest capability in our industry. So Steve, I know we covered a number of the major factors driving anodized color control, color consistency. We didn't get to them all, uh, but if you're having frustrations as you're looking at the design of your aluminum product, and color is a major factor. We're always happy to help, whether it be samples, color development, color range development, and um, really position you well for success on your next project. Yes. Thank you.